In part 5 of our series on learning to play Osprey Games Zone Alpha, we are going to cover ranged combat. Now there are two types of combat, ranged and melee. This video is only for ranged combat. Part 6 will cover melee combat. When engaging an opponent with a ranged attack, the attacker must have three things. At least one action to expend performing the attack, line of sight to the target model, and a weapon with sufficient range to reach the target. Pre-measuring is allowed. If any part of the target unit's base falls within the effective range of the attacker's weapon, the attack is allowed. If there's not, then there's no shot, no hit. To perform a ranged attack, the attacker declares they are using an action. So this guy will say, I am using a ranged attack action. They'll identify the intended target. In this case, he has two options. Let's say he picks this one. The attacker will then roll the number of firepower dice indicated on their weapon profile. So let's just say it's two, since he's got a machine gun there. The target number for a hit is the model's combat ability, plus or minus any modifiers such as cover, terrain, any special red dot laser sights, whatnot. Any die rolls of the modified target number or less are a hit. Remember, you want to roll low. So in this case, this didn't make it, but this one had a critical success. Now, just because you hit a target does not mean that target will take damage. Defenders are allowed an armor save to see if they can shrug off the hit. The defender, the one taking the hit, so let's say this guy again, gets one d10 roll per successful hit and then must roll to determine the extent of the hit's damage. The target number for the defender is their armor stat minus the attacking weapon's damage, plus or minus any cover modifiers. Any die rolls of the modifier target number or less count as deflections and no physical damage is sustained. So let's say this guy only made one hit, we'll remove that dice. This guy will make an armor save. He rolls a seven and that's not good enough for his armor. Now let's discuss field of view. See, all models are considered to have a 360 degree field of view, regardless of the facing of the model. So there's no rear arc or backstaffing or sneaking up on a model. So this model, even though pointing his weapon system at this individual, it doesn't matter. He can still make a shot just as easy at the guy behind him. And the guy behind him doesn't get any advantage to sneaking up behind him. Terrain. Most terrain features are large scenic items that add atmosphere to the game. This includes man-made objects and natural features. These features not only impede movement, but they can disrupt or block an attacker's line of sight. Any terrain feature taller than a model blocks or prevents ranged or melee attacks, unless one model is at a higher elevation. The only exception is weapons that are capable of indirect fire. Terrain items shorter than a model's height can be used to conceal or protect that model by interrupting the line of sight of the attacker. If a terrain item partially covers a model from a specific angle, it may grant a cover bonus to that model. To receive a cover bonus, the defending model must be in base-to-base -base contact with the terrain item and in position to benefit from the cover in relation to the angle of attack. Cover falls into four broad categories. Obstruction, soft, hard, and hardened. Obstructions are the first form of terrain modifier. There are any low terrain scenic that interrupts but does not totally block line of sight in the intervening span between the attacker and the defender. It is not protecting them, but it is partially blocking the shot. Obstructions give a negative one penalty per item to any attacker's combat ability. Obstructions are cumulative with each other and other types of cover. For example, this jersey wall would be an obstruction for both individuals, but when we talk about the other forms of cover, such as soft, hardened, the base must be touching. And what they mean by cumulative is I'd get an obstruction bonus for this item, and then I'd get a soft cover bonus for this item just because he's touching. If he wasn't touching, get double obstruction bonus. Cover falls into four broad categories. Obstructions, 
soft cover, hard cover, and hardened cover. Now let's discuss soft cover. Soft cover such as wooden boxes, trash cans, cardboard, shipping crates, low bushes, shrubs, a chain link fence, and so, so on. Soft cover gives a negative one penalty to the attacker's combat ability and plus one bonus to the defender's will stat. Hard cover, which I'm representing by these oil cans, are items such as brick walls, jersey barriers, dragon's teeth, and similar solid materials. Hard cover provides a negative one penalty to the attacker's combat ability, a plus one to defender's armor stat, and plus two bonus to defender's will stat. Now let's discuss hardened cover. So this individual hiding behind this constructed fortification. That's serious protection. Like that offered by concrete bunkers and sandbag weapon emplacements. Hardened cover, when encountered, gives a negative two penalty to attacker's combat ability, a plus two to defender's armor stat, and a plus three to defender's will stat. So now let's talk about the power of elevation in games of Zone Alpha. Now, there is an advantage to making what are called elevated attacks. For example, the individual up here would be able to make an elevated attack against this individual. Any ranged attack made from a higher elevation against a target in cover reduces the defender's cover level by one degree. This means hard cover shifts to soft cover, soft cover shifts to obstruction, and obstruction modifiers are canceled entirely when the attacker is at a higher elevation than the defender. Now let's discuss dealing with area effect weapons. We'll start with the blast templates. There's a three inch small blast template and a five inch large blast template. When determining targets for area effect weapons, any and all models under or touched by the blast template must roll for damage. So you could center your small blast template here, but you'd only get that guy, but you could center it here. And even though the bases of these two targets are only partially covered, they take the full damage from the template. There's no arguments over, well, my guy is only under half the template, so this should only be a partial. No. If this template touches you, it hurts you. Now let's discuss the flame template. I haven't assembled my flamer guy yet. Approximately 8 inches long and 3 inches at the widest point. It's teardrop shape, basically from the old Games Workshop sets and the current Necromunda set. No combat ability roll is made to place the teardrop template. Simply place the template as desired with the small end touching the base of the attacker and orient the flame template to maximize casualties. Any and all models under or touched by the flame template must roll damage. So in this situation, the best setup would be to line up here and flame them both. And then the burn condition comes into effect. And burning is especially nasty as all affected models under or touched by the flame template must keep rolling armor saves until they make a successful armor save or have suffered their last wound and go out of action. Now there is an exception to some of how the templates work, and that's when area effect weapons encounter terrain features. Terrain items will modify or block a template's area of effect. So models caught in an area effect template but behind soft cover receive a plus two bonus to their armor save roll. Hard and hardened cover will completely block the blast effect. This allows you to throw grenades over a wall and not be hurt by them. So for example, this individual can't even see that individual, but he can still throw a grenade. And even though technically this template would fall on the other side of this wall and touch his base and affect him, the rules for the cover state that this wall will absorb all the damage. And that can also happen if you call in a mortar attack and you center it here, the walls will protect your guys if you land the shot right. And there is a scatter condition, so this could go horribly wrong. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of Learn to Play Zona Alpha.